Hi, it's me, David, and I'd like to welcome you to Life with Parkinson's. For everybody new, welcome. I hope you consider subscribing. For everybody else, thank you for coming back again and watching another episode. Just a little update about myself. I'll be seeing my neurologist in a few weeks. I'm hoping to talk more about a deep brain stimulation and to find out where I'm in the wait list. Things that are getting harder to do is driving. I try and stay well medicated for it and wide awake as possible. But when there's a lot of traffic around you, it's, it's getting hard. I don't know if it's because I can't, it probably is that I just can't keep track of all the cars, but <sighs> when it's busy, it's hard. I bet there's a lot of people out there like that. Today we're basically going to talk about things that I've discovered just basically playing around. Dystonia, freezing, and dyskinesia. <laughs> there's a mouthful. So let's get right to it. What are the problems that I have with dystonia? Well, for the first and the biggest one for me would be when I wake up in the morning, my right leg sometimes just cramps up and it is brutal. Like if I'm on my phone or I'm on the computer too early or I wake up and I've had a bad sleep or I'm stressed, that right leg just locks right up and I tell you, it just lifts right off the ground and I'm on my tiptoes and I gotta like ram it back down. Another bad one is uh, if I'm really tired or it's nighttime, my thumb will just curl around my hand and it, it'll just keep going. And then the other one will do it. And then I've got both of them like this and I can't even pick up my phone. That's another bad one. Another bad one is my, yeah, which way do I tilt? Yeah, I tilt this way. Kind of like data on Star Trek. So I try and get back to center. So it's kind of in my neck a little bit. It's been there for a few years. Uh, lockjaw, I call it lockjaw. I don't know what it is else to call it. Like if I'm having a a meal that takes a lot of chewing, like a pizza. My jaw muscles will clamp right up. Or if I'm writing with my hand, well, <laughs> writing with a pen, writing holding a pen with my hand, and I'm doing too much, yeah, the letters just get smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually my hand just cramps up. Another one would be typing on the computer. I can only type so long. Another one would be, another one is where your, I don't know if you guys get it, your lip curls right up. Like when you're talking to somebody too long and the only only way to settle it down is like touching it. I get that when I'm tired or in the afternoon like in between shots. If I'm talking to somebody too long, it's um, that one I'm pretty self-conscious about because it makes me look like, I don't know, I can't really do it unless it's happening. But it kind of looks like I'm snarling at somebody. That's what one of my friends said. Yeah, those are the really bad ones. Oh, and the toe curls. Right, when my right leg jams up, like it might happen on its own. My curl, toes just curl right under. There's like no way to stop them. So what have I found that helps? Well, the right leg jamming up and the toe curling is, a lot of it is my problem. I cause a lot of it because, as you know, I'm addicted to YouTube. So I'm constantly on there checking what other people are doing, looking for other Ch Parkinson's channels or, yeah, so I've got to wait longer in the morning before I jump on my phone or jump on my computer. But it does happen a lot on its own. Like one time I was going out for a walk in the morning and it just jammed up like, I basically had to sit on the ground and we're in a gated community so I knew someone was watching me and 80% of the population in here is senior citizens thankfully. So I knew someone would come and pick me up and lo and behold, someone walked out of their door and drove me home. They, were, they made sure I got into the house. <laughs> it was embarrassing, but then it was also, you know, I'm lucky to live in a community like this where people watch out for you. Things that I found is getting on my knees and leaning back and just stretching that muscle out or crawling. That seems to help with it. Laying back down in my bed for the toe curls. It hasn't really been that effective. Uh, I found stretching out my hamstrings or just massaging that muscle out. Really, I just gotta wait until the meds kick in or I could cheat and take a shot of Movapo, but I don't really like to do that when I wake up just in the morning. And um, there's certain times of the day I like to use the Movapo. And when I, when I take it in the morning, like I take a lot of, I don't know, I call it my wake up boost. So I do take a lot of medication in the morning. I find if I double up, on the Movapo and too many tablets at one time. It's not good, it's better to take the Movapo in between. Uh, the lip curling, the best thing to do for that, I've found is just lay down somewhere and close my eyes or 
just end the conversation and just try and relax. Yeah, you know, stress, stress exacerbates all of these issues. All of these, I'm just going to call it dystonic issues. So another thing is just to calm, keep myself calm. But, you know, life sometimes, as you know, isn't very calm. So what do you do when it happens? Lock jaw. I just keep chewing it until my jaw just goes snap, 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 and then I just gotta put the food aside. There's nothing I can do about that one. Uh, the neck tilt, I just try and straighten my neck out, and you see me doing a lot of these stretches in my workouts, and that's just, oh, I need that. I need that one. That's just for my physiotherapist trying to give me home remedies to solve the neck tilt, and it does, and when I Get in front of a mirror, I try and tilt it back to the regular position, but then it feels so weird. Like it's it's meant to be this way. I'm meant to be like, huh? What did you say? Or oh, are you having a bad day? The hand curling. So like the thumbs curling under the hands. That's a that's a tough one. That usually happens when I'm tired or I've been on the computer too long or I've been texting too long. It's a lot of times I just do it to myself, but it does happen when I'm tired. I try and Massage that pressure point, the one in between your thumb and your index finger. And if both of them are happening at the same time, I try and do them both at the same time, but it's really hard because you got to get the thumbs like pushing down on that area. So you got to use the thumb to push down on that other area and you can only really get it one at a time. I do have a button installed on my bed so I can call my wife and she a lot of times she does come and massage them out for me, so I'm very grateful for that. When I've got that right leg jamming up, I need to go pee. I'll show you my spin move here in the bathroom. I don't do it all the time. Sometimes if I'm too off or I'm too tired at night, it doesn't work. But I just kind of put my hands on the counter and spin around on one foot. I don't recommend it for everybody. Sometimes it doesn't work for me. I haven't fallen into the bathtub when I do it yet, so I'm very grateful. Up to you if you want to try it. I don't really, I haven't really found a better way to turn around. Like, why can't we just walk into the bathroom and push a button and the toilet comes up out of the floor and then we do our business and then we get back up and the toilet goes back down. So then we don't have to turn around, it'd be so nice. Or the, you know, when we sit around, sit down, the toilet turns us around and then we can back out, the other, get back up and just walk out the other way. Wouldn't that be a nice invention? Yeah, the toe curls, and basically when, once my right leg starts to feel better, the two toe curls do go away. Well, a few times I've put my leg up on, on a chair in the kitchen, and that seems to help on its own. So it just seems to be that, um, it seems to be that hamstring muscle that just retracts. I don't know. It's just, uh, why does it have to hurt so much? If you're enjoying this content and you want to help other people find it, please hit the like button. That is the best way for this video to spread to more people. Thank you. Okay, so the question I have for you guys. When the dyskinesia lasts for an hour or two and it's really, really bad, does that count as exercise? So I can skip my exercise session that day if the dyskinesia is really bad? I don't know. I'm going to ask my, I'm going to try and write that down and ask my, uh, ask my neurologist if that counts. I don't know about you guys, but I've found that, um, the dyskinesia gets really bad like when I'm upset or I'm stressed or I'm having kind of like those serious talks, I don't know, with, with anybody about anything. I just start twitching around and there's no way to stop it. Sometimes I have it when I'm making videos, I'm sure you've seen that, but today I'm pretty, pretty relaxed. It's been a good day. Yesterday was not a good day. I tried to film this yesterday and yeah, I couldn't concentrate. Today seems to be a good day and for that I'm grateful. But yeah, if I over medicate, like if I take my Movapo shot, like right on top of my pills, then I tend to get a lot of dyskinesia. Or if I've had too many Movapo shots in a row, like I don't like to do more than three. Like I can only take one every three hours. So if I've done one at, let's say at one and then three and then five, I definitely don't want to take one at seven because I know when I get to bed, I'm going to be rocking and rolling. And there's no way to stop it unless I take some extra sleep medication, which I'm not really supposed to, but my family doctor says it's okay. Like if, if I'm having it and it's around my nap time, and if I can just still, you know, still myself a little bit, and I count with my breathing, I count one when I breathe in, two when I breathe out, one when I breathe in, two when I breathe out. This doesn't work every time. But a lot of times it will just kind of settle the dyskinesia down or if I go for a walk or do some strenuous exercise. 
fit on the elliptical trainer, it will help the dyskinesia go away most of the time. But I've found in the end actually going to sleep and getting some of that brain, what I call brain repair when you have a little nap, that's really the only thing I've, I've found that works every time if you can fall asleep. So eventually it just seems to go away on its own. I, I don't have any medication to take for the dyskinesia. I just really want to find out if it counts as exercise. Okay, the freezing. This is one I've found, I have actually found a few effective things to do. Like for me, freezing happens like when I wake up or in between pill times. Okay, so I take my pills at 7, so between like 7 and 8, my off time I'll kind of like drift away. And then around like 9 or 9.30 I'll get some off time again. That's kind of when I'll take my Movapo shot. It's like 9.30 quarter to 10 and then 10 I take my pills. So the Movapo will kind of carry me over that off time. When I wake up in the middle of the night, that's a bad off time. So that's when a lot of the freezing does happen. Or in the middle of the day, like close to my nap time, that's when it'll happen as well. So if I'm getting really bad freezing, like one thing I've found that works almost every time is getting really, really mad, like really angry. And throwing a few swear words out does help as well. Or I get really angry and just say, come on, like move. That was recommended to me by the physiotherapist at the neurologist's office and it actually really works. She also did suggest marching in place trying to make that turn. I've never, I haven't found that works but maybe it works for some of you guys. And another one of the things that I found that works if I'm still kind of a little bit on is like rocking back and forth and just shifting my weight and then eventually I'll be able to get one of my feet off the ground an inch or two and just slide it off the carpet, over the carpet which is one of the reasons I try and wear socks all day because if I'm on like linoleum floor my feet will stick to it a little bit so I found that having the socks on as much as possible does seem to make a difference of course if you've gotten into a situation where you just can't get out of it I try and get on the floor and crawl to my destination for some reason I don't get any freezing when I'm crawling I guess it's one of those constant movements that you do yeah, getting down on the floor can be hard. I try not to go down too hard. I try not to go down with like open palms because I found from other areas of my life, if you go down with open palms, for me anyhow, that's when I seem to sprain a finger or bend a finger back or sprain my wrist. I try and go down, not with my elbows, but you know, with my fists closed and try and make the landing that way. It's kind of one of the ways I don't hurt myself. Obviously, we don't want to go backwards, but it's Parkinson's ban. It's a nasty disease. Funny thing here, I found that freezing can, in, in my situation anyhow, I found that freezing can be from missing a meal or not eating enough food. I don't always want to blame it on the Parkinson's, but sometimes I'll eat and I'll be like, I'm full, right? And I'm like, oh, I only ate half of what I put out. Yeah. But okay, it must be enough. And then I'll I'll get like, a, I'm going to call it a sugar low because I don't know what exactly what it is. My wife would be like, maybe you should eat something. And I'm like, okay. So I'll get like a piece of fruit or something with a bit of sugar in it because I can't handle too much sugar. And I'll be like, oh, I'll start to feel better. Sometimes some of my off times i found are from not eating enough food. I don't know if you guys experience that. And yeah, for freezing, I try to get to call for a chair if I'm in a bad situation. Or just get to the couch and close my eyes for a little while. Of course, stress and anxiety, <laughs> like if I'm having a really bad day or the anxiety is really bad. I don't know, the freezing just doesn't go away most of the day. I call it a couch or a chair day. Or, or I'll take a Movapo shot. Um, that's the only thing that can rip through the anxiety that I have. I, I've got nothing else that can do it. And if the anxiety is really bad, the Movapo will rip through it, but it won't, sus it won't sustain it very long, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. But it, at least it's 20 minutes, half an hour, I didn't have before. So I am grateful. Those are my Parkinson's life hacks for dystonia, dyskinesia, and freezing. If you've got some of your own that you've found that help, uh, let me know. It'd be interesting to get a good discussion going in the comments below. As always, please like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for taking this journey together. You guys have been really great. Thank you and have a good day and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.